All right. Okay. I just want to start by saying I wanted to do a funny one for this one because my last one's going to be a little more serious. But uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, well, yes, but I'll make the case for that if you disagree. Now, I mentioned last class briefly what my topic was, and I couldn't help but overhear the positive and negative feedback related to this idea. And by the way, seeking adherence. I seek for all of us to adhere to an objective truth today. Now, now take a good look at what we have in front of us. And these are rhetorical questions, but notice how we have a split roll, a piece of sausage inside it, and sausage is a type of meat, and a roll, whether split or not, is bread. But this is only the start of the analysis because the story starts much farther back now. Here's a lesson for you all who are students of history. Those who claim they did it first usually didn't, but all I'm arguing here is that my research shows that the guy we want to look to is John Montague. Now the question is, who is John Montague? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> he, was, he was born in 1718 and died in 1792. He was a British statesman, a postmaster general, you know, decent achievements. And before I go on with the story, it's important to note that his full name was John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich. So he was the 4th Earl of Sandwich. He wasn't the first sandwich. However, in 1762, something remarkable happened. Despite his achievements, he had a little bit of a gambling problem. But, but nonetheless, the story goes, and I'm using foodtimeline.org as my reference here. Food historians generally attribute the creation of the sandwich, as we know it today, to John Montague, a 4th Earl of Sandwich. This Englishman was said to have been fond of gambling, as the story goes, and this is important. In 1762, during a 24-hour gambling streak, he instructed a cook to prepare his food in such a way that it would not interfere with his game. The cook presented him with sliced meat between two pieces of toast. Perfect! Uh, the meal required no utensils and could be eaten with one hand, leaving the other hand free to continue the game. So, so what do you notice here? It's all becoming a pattern. Bread, meat, one-handed satisfaction. We make them because we're lazy, or sometimes not even. Sometimes you want that one-handed satisfaction later on. Sometimes we want to gamble for more than 24 hours. Now, to make my case stronger, I'm going to go right into the definitions. Now, looking to Webster's Dictionary, and by the way, Noah Webster, a very important figure, in 1806, he published a compendious dictionary of the English language. It was truly the first American dictionary, but it really wasn't until 1828 when he published an American dictionary of the English language. Now, the word sandwich, as we know it, came from the gambling table in 1762. Remember that. So, so what does Webster's Dictionary define a sandwich as? Quote, two or more slices of bread or... A split roll, having a feeling like between <laughs> Now, how about that? Well, how about another popular dictionary? Let's take Oxford. And by the way, Oxford Dictionary, published in like 1884, like almost 60 years after the Webster's Dictionary. Well, anyways, let, let me read you their definition. It's when you insert or squeeze someone or something between two other people or things. I think I copied the verb tense there. So sorry, for those who didn't get the joke, there's actually more than one definition of sandwich. But here we go. An item of food consisting of two pieces of bread with filling in between them, eaten as a light meal. Now, all right, here we go. They claim it's two pieces of bread, so now we enter into the rebuttal phase. Is a hot dog not a sandwich if that split roll is turned into two pieces? Well, no. This would defy the logic of all of it, first off. One rebuttal anyways would be that, if a, hot that a hot dog isn't a sandwich because it is a split roll. It isn't two pieces of, say, white bread or wheat bread. But hold on now. Old Noah didn't agree. A split roll is fine or a split roll. But again, let's redefine what we spoke of in the original instance. Bread, meat, one-handed satisfaction. Now, I know there are probably some in here who wouldn't eat the hot dog because of the meat, and I'm on keto, so I can't eat the bread. So I'll be offering away the sandwich at the end. <laughs> passive, passive, aggressive. Um, I, I doubt anyone here would feel burdened if that split roll, hanging by a thread in the scheme of things, is going to reduce a person's ability to handle that sandwich upon being split into two distinct pieces. It's just not gonna happen. At most, you had too much ketchup and mustard to let it drip through, but uh, you know, otherwise there would be a compartment there afforded by the slit, so um, I'm telling you, keep the compartment, drench it all you want. Don't split the hot dog bun and assume you can miscalculate your condiments and get away with it. Now, I'm going to deal with one more rebuttal because I heard someone last class say, the bread to meat ratio is incorrect, there's too much bread, well look, I mean, compared to what? Uh, when you go to Subway, the first thing they ask you is, do you want to upgrade to a 12-inch freaking sub? And give me a break. If you get catering through Subway, they'll bring you six-foot subs. I'm like six foot three, so, and if I had, it, and if you did that, um, you'd kill how many people with celiac disease? So the point is, if you're going to tell me Subway doesn't serve sandwiches, explain this. Now, I know you all didn't know I'd prove my case as well, but this is a job application at Subway, 
And what, what is this title here for? Sandwich artist, how about that? How about that? So I, I hope you all take these things into consideration. To conclude, does anyone want, want what we now know is undeniably true to be a hot dog sandwich? No one wants this, no one wants this. It's all yours. Okay, thank you. <laughs>